is so that you can see this a little bit better is we're going to kill the lights. So if you'll kill the lights, um, there. So now you should be able to see the string pretty clearly, okay? Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start the speaker and I'm going to have it vibrate, right? So here we go. Now, let me show you one thing that's relatively interesting. If you're quiet, you can hear the speakers vibrating back and forth, right? But the string's not really doing anything. You can see a little bit of motion in the spring, or in the string, but there's not really a whole lot going on. And the reason for that is I'm not plucking it at the right, I'm not having the speaker do it right. I'm not saying, you know, pull it like that. I'm having it just hit it all the time, right? And so it doesn't get a chance to wave back and forth. It keeps getting disturbed. And so a standing wave pattern only forms at certain frequencies. What, was, what, what did the word frequency mean? Uh, how often? Okay, it's, it's how often it vibrates back and forth, right? The frequency tells me how fast it's vibrating back and forth. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it vibrate it back and forth at certain frequencies. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it down a little bit. All right, so now I'm shaking it, but I'm still not shaking it at the right frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look far and I'm going to play with the little dial to where this thing forms a nice little wave pattern. Okay, so I'm going to change the frequency. And if I get the frequency just right, <laughs> then I get this weird thing, this weird shape form, okay? Where I get this fat part there and a little little thingy there and a big fat thingy there, right? <laughs> now, those aren't, those aren't science terms, those are, you know, my terms. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'll give you the actual science names, right? So, so when a wave crosses over the resting position, like the spot where there, when there was no energy, right, when it's laying down, when the wave crosses that, what was that called? It starts with an N. A node, right? A node. So nothing's going on at the node. So nothing happening at the node. In fact, I can pick it up and it won't even mess up the wave. I can just play with it, right? So nothing happens at the node. And then I got this spot over here, which is like the opposite of a node, right? Here I got nothing going on. And here, that's where all the action's happening. And so this is like the opposite. So instead of calling it a node, we call this an anti-node, okay? An anti-node. So we have an anti-node, a node, and then over here I have another anti-node, okay? This is what's known as the uh, second harmonic, okay, for the, all the, you know, like music type people, okay? It's also known as the first, first overtone. Uh, and the reason why it's called that is because we have two of these anti-nodes, right? And what's really going on is I have a wave and the speaker makes a little crest form, right? It pushes up on the, on, the, on the string and the string goes up, right? So it forms a crest, it goes up and then it comes down at the node and then it bounces underneath and it makes a trough. And then it hits the other side and just like an echo, like when I, you know, if I scream real loud and I'm in the Alps, like on a Ricola commercial or something, then a couple of minutes later it comes back and hey, hey, you know, so I got that thing going on. So here I bounce it and then it bounces back, right? But when it bounces back, it flips over, right? Remember how I did the traveling wave and when it got to the end, it flipped over? Well, same thing here. It goes down, hits this, flips over, comes back, and so now it forms a crest and then a trough. And so what you really have, even though it looks like this wave's not going anywhere, is you have lots of waves going this way and you got lots of waves coming back this way. And it's happening just right to where the crests and the troughs always occur in the same spot. So what I really have is the distance from this speaker all the way down to this post, this is exactly one wavelength, okay? So if the frequency makes it to where the wavelength is exactly the distance between these two things, then a standing wave form appears, okay? Now, this is what's called the second harmonic, okay? Well, there is a first harmonic. A first harmonic is got half the frequency of this, okay? Half the frequency of this. Could you turn the light on for just a moment? So y'all got an equation yesterday, or you may have got an equation yesterday, 
Uh, and if I were a marker therapy, okay, and you got an equation yesterday, and the equation said that the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength of the wave, that's wavelength, it's a weird symbol, but it that means wavelength, times the frequency of a wave. That's what you got, right? And if we were in math class, which I know physics class seems like math class, but it's not, okay, if we were in math class and we increased the frequency of the wave, what would happen to velocity if you were in math class? Velocity would increase, right? An increase in this results in an increase in that. That's what we learned in math class. But it turns out that that's not true in physics class. Okay? It turns out, have you all ever heard of the speed of sound? Okay? Well, all sound travels at the same speed. Light. All light, no matter what kind of light it is, it all travels at the same speed. Velocity is a constant. That number does not change. It's determined by what it's traveling through. So all, all waves that go through this string have a certain speed. All waves that go through air have a different speed. But it, the speed doesn't change no matter how fast I vibrate it. Okay? So my question to you is this. If frequency increases, what has to happen if velocity doesn't change? Wavelength has to decrease. So let me show you that. To prove that when frequency increases, wavelength decreases. Velocity does not change. Did you hit the lights? Yeah. All right, so now we're here at the second harmonic, okay, first overtone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the frequency and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to make it smaller. So if I make the frequency smaller, what happens to the wavelengths? It gets longer. If I cut it, the frequency in half, what happens to wavelength? No? If frequency goes down, wavelength goes up. So if I cut the frequency in half, what happens to wavelength? It's got to double. It gets twice as long, right? And so what happens is I end up with one crest that goes from this end all the way to that end. Okay? Because it's half a wavelength. If this is one half wavelength, or I'm sorry, if this is one wavelength, if I double the wavelength, then it's going to, half of the wave is going to fit between that post. So the frequency right now is a little bit less than 11. So I'm going to make it a little bit more than 5-ish. And so now, Now it looks like I'm plucking a guitar, right? I'm just pulling on it and it bounces back and forth because guitars operate at their fundamental frequency. They also have some other frequencies that are going on, but basically they vibrate back and forth just like that. And if I want to change the note that I'm playing, then I have to change the length of the string. And if I change the length of the string, I change the frequency at which this thing vibrates back and forth. And so when you change chords, that's what you're doing, okay? So I have the standing wave pattern form, and so I know that if I decrease my frequency, then my wavelength increases. So what happens if I increase my frequency? I decrease my wavelength, so more waves fit on the string. And so I'm going to double it. Now notice, I'm doing things like I'm multiplying times 2, or if I multiply times 4. So if I multiply, okay, this fundamental frequency, so I have this frequency, it's about 5-ish, okay, about 11. So if I double that, then I should be able to fit more, right? But if I do it by three, if I multiply times three, it turns out that I get an odd multiple, and that's okay. So let's see here. Help me out, because it's like seven periods. So it's like five and a half times three is what? Sixteen and a half? Yeah. Good, thank you. All right. So let's go to about sixteen and a half-ish. Oh, wow. <laughs> And so, by changing the frequency by an uh, odd multiple, I end up with an odd number of antinodes. If you want to know how many waves are on here, then you just count the number of antinodes, one, two, three, and divide it by two, and you end up with one and a half wavelengths. Okay, so I have one and a half wavelengths on that string right now. Any questions so far? You're going to have to speak up because I can't see you raising your hand. The only person can be me. <laughs> no? Okay. 
And if I keep to increasing the frequency, the same thing happens. Now, what happens if I change amplitude? Well, if I change the amount of energy that I put into the wave, then notice, the frequency didn't change. I'm turning up the volume, right? I'm increasing the amplitude. What's happening is the wave height gets bigger, but the frequency doesn't change. Okay, a change in amplitude does not affect frequency and it does not affect wavelength. You're the first class I told that to because I keep forgetting to tell the other classes. Oh well. <laughs> that's all right. Okay, so let's see here. I think that's about it. Did I miss anything, Ms. Perkins, on that one? I don't think so. Okay, good. So if you'll go ahead and kill or turn the lights back on. Okay, so now we'll talk about something else. Okay? So this this just shows that you have you do have waves that occur along strings, right? But strings are not the only thing that we have in the world. Okay, in fact, the world, most waves don't occur on a string. Okay, most of waves occur on surfaces. 